My name is Jimmy Laudermilk, and I make Cold Mountain Panjos. Uh, we take just any kind of wood and any kind of pan that you can find laying around or from a thrift store or flea markets. And uh, I'm going to show you today how to make a panjo, I call it. Uh, this is kind of based on uh, Appalachian instruments from the 1800s and early 1900s. Uh, people using all kind of lard cans, uh, cookie tins. Um, just, uh, you know, once you get started on it, you'll start seeing things all over the place that you can make panjos out of. So, like I said, we're going to be taking either from a kit that I have or, you know, from um, just whatever you have really around the house. I, I guarantee, uh, minus the strings and the keys, you probably already have all this stuff around the house that you can make a panjo with. And so we, we're going to make this one today. Uh, this year I've started doing uh, the actual panjo kits where I have all the parts in there uh, to, to put one together. And a lot of times I find where if I want to build something, the best way for me to build it is if I've, I've got the actual some, the one that I'm copying right beside me. And these could be used as the same thing, whereas like if you want to use fancier wood or different kind of wood, uh, you know, this th this is what comes in the kit. It's, you know, it'd be easy to, you know, copy that and if you want to use wal <coughs> walnut or um, probably the best wood for the neck is a, is a harder wood. But this right here, I use, this is a pan, these are from the Dollar Tree pans and when the way we're making these pans, I'm sure um, they didn't think about music one day coming from them. But what I do is um, I have that and this is just some thin, uh, this is underlayment wood that I use for the tops. This is what? Underlayment. If you go to, I think like 5, mi 5 .0 millimeters uh, thick and uh, it comes in like 4 by 8 sheets and that's what I use for the tops. Uh, these necks that I use is Florida Cypress wood um, and this sticker wood is my favorite kind of wood because um, Hans what's your favorite kind of wood? Free. Free. This is free wood to me. <laughs> uh, there's a shop near my house that builds wooden shutters and they use this Florida Cypress wood. Well one day I passed by this and this where they made these wooden shutters at and they had a big pile of strips laying outside. And I contacted somebody and they said, oh, you can have all you want. Well, when you get the, when these strips are laying outside of this um, shutter place where they make them, they're this wide. They have this bending, they have this already on here and they're about eight foot long. So this right here is from one of those eight foot strips and then I, I round off the end for the headstock there. So that is what I use for my necks now, which saved me a lot, a lot of time. Because it was pretty close. The only thing is a little narrow, but the strings are the, the same size through there. And then also for this piece here, it has to be a little thinner, so I run it through a planer. Or, and just kind of uh, thin it down just a little bit, the same strips. So um, that's what I use for my next down. And it's a, you know, surprisingly, it's a hardwood that doesn't warp. Now, if you let me open this up here, let me show you some parts that are involved in putting this together. And I tell you what, I'm going to ask, if he doesn't care, I want to ask Hans to come up and we'll take this one here and he's going to put one together with me uh -oh. or build one <laughs> now do you ever bi build your panjo have you built a pan have you uh, built a panjo uh, to be honest with you no okay i know he had bought a so i didn't need a few, to i didn't need to <laughs> he had bought a few kits we swapped a lot of <laughs> a lot of my scroll saw for panjo so i i've got four in the house that don't play so i think that's enough <laughs> i have a beautiful uh uh 
thing that Hans did is a kind of an oval about this size and it has all these different musicians and different instruments that Hans made for me and I have it in my room that I teach. I teach music and I have it hanging there now and I'm very proud of it. All right, so this is going to be your kit there. Okay. All right. In this little in the little hardware kit here. I'm going to kind of I know use you know nowadays if you buy anything from a lot of time uh, Walmart and stuff everything's got all these little parts and I like to kind of separate them into the different groups what they are. Now, probably the most important, well, every part really is important on the Panjo, but this tuning key right here is uh, one difference from the la what I've started doing. If you notice, the keys on this Panjo are all three on a plate. And when you drill the hose, uh, it has, it's precise, you know, as far as like, it has to be dead on. Well, one thing with the with these keys, you can have your spacing a little bit different, and they're all individual. So if you wanted to have, um, you know, it kind of spaced out more for looks or something, you could. Or I leave a lot of times on these kits. I leave this blank, the slots here, so you can make this a one string or two string or three string if you wanted to, just with that there. Uh, the strings, I use the first three strings of a guitar, the, the E, the B, and the G is what I, and that's my probably the most common question I have is like what kind of strings they use in the first three strings of a guitar. Now when you unwind these, they are way longer than you need for the panjo, but what you do, they use, you'll put them on there and then cut off the excess after you tune. So I'm going to lay those over to the side. Um, I'm working on various jigs to cut these circles out with. Uh, I have before laid a square piece of wood on the pan itself, you know, and then sawed it, sawed it out that way after it's been screwed on there. Um, or cut this just some, like a lot of times I'll cut my blank piece of that and then I paint them before I cut them out, but just some different, you know, just a lot of time, most of my stuff I do is, I find I can paint better where it looks distressed. I mean, my painting already kind of naturally looks distressed, but with, if I, you know, intentionally make it look distressed, it's, it's better. So a lot of people seem to like that. All right, so what we're gonna do first, we're gonna go down the list here and we're going to attach the fretboard and like I said if you want to you can lay w one of those over there and we're going to attach the fretboard to the neck now this is the fretboard here and notice it sits on top of the neck but where I know to put it at I've got a little template here that is, is figure one, that I'm gonna cut this out. And this is gonna be used for, um, when you're putting it down. Yeah. yeah, and if you, here's another one. Okay. So I'm gonna cut this out. Okay. It has where the keys are gonna go. Uh, but what I, a lot of times what I like to do, say if you're going to use a different pan than this to where the thing is, to where I've got the neck length. I try to stay like around 22 to 23 inches uh, for this neck. And see if I put it in this little slot here, and then I can kind of check and see if I've got enough room for my three there. And I would. So 
what I'm going to do with this the little fretboard piece right here. After I lay this down on the end of this, and then my fretboard is going to that's is going to come to that mark right there. And it be on the and it's also it's on the end where it has a little curve down, and that's what I do for the headstock. So I go to the end. end? Mm, yep, and you, like I said, have it over this away, okay. and it's all the way over the curve and right there. And so your fret, and we can put a little mark right there that that's where that's going to be. Okay. <coughs> okay. Now, um, using some of this uh, wood glue that Hans was telling me about here that's a very quick tack, we're going to put a little bit on here. I don't want to do this the Rob method? No. <laughs> <laughs> Does he use a lot? He uses a lot. Running out about six more gallons. All right. <laughs> anyway, I place it down on that little mark right there, and now with our little um, nails here, and um, here's your little hammer. Four of them. Four of them. And what I do is I put these at the first, third the fifth and just past the seventh fret and also we use them for okay we'll use them for fret markers because if you notice on the guitar you'll see different markers on it and what that does is help you find your frets quicker so if, like on the guitar if, it, if I had some music and said play at the twelfth fret on the guitar there's two dots and I know right away that's the twelfth fret and here, so I have the three. The five. And the seven, or just past the seven right there. All right. And then taking this same uh, template here, if you notice on it, I have um, three square, three marks there, and I'm going to lay this over the end here, right there, and that's where I'm going to drill three pilot holes. Well, actually, just go ahead and drill the um, quarter-inch holes where the where the tuning keys are going to go in. So let me use this to be honest. Okay, and I can just go ahead and just drill straight uh, through. Or let me just place a little mark on that. Because Han's going to need it too. So now you place that on the end there. So now I'm going to drill the three hose. I am going all the way through, and you can uh, kind of sand that after the fact. We're just gonna, and then these keys <coughs> will just go through the back. And I want, and you want the <laughs> top part of the key. Like if you're playing it like this, it's gonna be up on this side. And they're just going to run through there like that.
All right. Also, if you notice in this kit, I have a little, there's a little bridge that we'll be uh, doing later on. And now, in a second, I'm going to drill me a couple little pilot holes here. We're going to uh, drill these keys on here. And I've got some very small screws that we're going to be using to attach those on there. I'm on this one. So let me drill me a little. Begin there. Like so here I'm just like I said just starting a little hole where I put, insert these screws. There you go. All right. Um, while Hans is putting his uh, there, the pan that I'm using, I cut the hole out just a little bit bigger than the um, the neck. And one thing what it does is creates a sound hole to where the neck is going to come about right here and then the sound is going to come out through this. And I found by putting hose on the tops of these, I guess it lets too much sound out in that amount of space there. You're still going to have some sound coming off the top with no hose, but then you're going to have sound here so that works out. All right, so now let me change this over. We're going to put our little screws in for the... All right, I'm going to put these in here. Okay. I'll tell you what, that's going to hold it in for now. I'm going to come back and add those three in it there. So we'll have that. Now let me see what the, on here, the next step, attach this part <coughs> to the pan. And what I like to do is, is just put a couple, four screws um, at the 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, uh, maybe 8 o'clock, and 4 o'clock position. Um, and just maybe your wood grain, or you can paint this whatever color or you want to. Or if you want to leave your pan out for a while to get rusty, you can. So what I'm going to do in this second is drill four pilot holes for these four screws I have here. And what I do this top is attached. The only pans that will really work for this using this style, they need a lip there because that's where the screw is going to go down through to hold the top on. So sometimes I find pans that don't have any lips that would be perfect. Um, that I can't use because this way I do this. And I have thought uh, you can, if you didn't have a lip on it, you'd have a little block inside um, attached in there that you could screw down onto that block, but I haven't got into that yet. Is there a maximum thickness to the top? You know, um, this is probably about the maximum thickness because like say like on this one where this uh, is made from a pallet, I had thinned down some of these this wood here, and um, it, it's actually so hard a wood that I would need to thin it some more because it's just a dead sound. And they make this where it's it's three millimeters where it's a lot thinner. So you know, I tried a while back to make some of those, and the sound was just not great on it. So I was like, you know, I was going to start using some of those, but so this is the best thickness. They, it would. Um, this, like I said, is a plywood. If you had a solid wood top, that is the ultimate. What you want, you know, all guitars and mandolins and fiddles, they use solid wood. Um, uh, I do these at craft shows, and a you know a solid top like this, a solid piece of wood, uh, would be a lot more expensive. A lot of time, it'd just be sixty or seventy bucks just for the, a top. So maybe cedar or walnut or, or well, if you could cut it that thin? Yeah, cedar is a cherry, cherry, 
the, the top doesn't have to be a hard wood. It can be mahogany. Uh, the, on guitar making, the spruce top is, is the, the spruce uh, is the most, like an uh, oh, I can't even say it, uh, and then it is the most popular. Uh, but like I said, if you build a guitar and buy just the top to it, it's around $100. $100. Uh, so, and then that's the same thing with the net. You can use, um, I noticed out here in the store, a great selection of all these different beautiful woods um, that you use. I know I'd bought some wood here before that just for the neck, you know, I had like 25 bucks in the neck, you know. So, I mean, so really, if you wanted to build a really nice one for less than, you know, than a, around $100, you could have great, you know, great wood. I'll say this is. You want it running up the neck, or you want it running up the up the neck, and that's kind of what I guess just from the guitar days of. That's still the same way I run it there, but it's just it doesn't matter on the plywood. So like I said, now I'm going to drill. And what in what relationship do we have to drill these holes, sir? Well. I put them at the 10, 2, 4, and 8. Okay. So it's not like an exact science as far as those. It's just to kind of uh, to attach. So let me do a little hot hoe here. Okay, much better. And so that there. Now what I like to do is go ahead and just enjoy yours there. Go ahead and run a couple of the screws in to just where it doesn't move anymore. A bit small for this. Okay, I'm gonna and um, in a second there do my other two. Two. My, um, at these craft shows that I do, the biggest customers, I mean, the, I guess the, my largest fan base is grandparents because they buy them for their grandkids because they don't want to buy them anymore. Technology. As you see, most kids these days and even adults sit around all the time with their phone and, and do this. And um, so this is playing an instrument's a great way to get them away from that for a little bit. You want to stick this in yet? <laughs> Not yet, about there. All right. Now. Drill again. Yep. Okay. This part here is going to go into the insert right there. And I've got this kind of tight here. And what I do is uh, you want this to kind of, you, you know, say if I had it like turned this way, it wouldn't work. You want this just to be kind of lined up um, where it's straight up like that. And once I do that is where I'm going to be drilling a couple of pilot holes again, about two inches down from here. And then about four inches down from there. Okay. And I have these little screws here that are going to be flush with the top. And this is what's going to hold the neck onto it here. Let's see, let me use this a little bit bigger bit. And as I'm doing this on here, I want to make sure it stays straight. There you go. Help you there. 
so that that I have I have that there. I'll catch up eventually. All right, uh, so I have this now, and I'm going to drill holes for the strings to go through. What size bit? Uh, I just do that Same little one. bit right there because the strings at the end of the strings, they have it has a little ball that that catches on whatever you run it through there, and I want that to be straight up through. As far as measurements and all this, the the most important thing is the part I'm about to do. As far as this needs to be straight from there to where, if you had these running, it kind of run off. Just using this little template there, I kind of come down here, and I'm going to be going straight across. And if I had like a little a straight edge, I can still have it where, say, I'm coming across there. And then on the end of this template here, you'll see there's some little hash marks. And that's how far apart my strings are. So I've got this laying there. And I'm going to make a little mark. Now the strings are going to run through up this here, so I'm going to drill the hose. Uh, like I said, the little final sanding part um, I'm not doing uh, right now. But the strings, you'll, once you get done, you'll have the little hose that run through the lip there. Um, so now I want to, well, before we put the strings on, if you notice up here at the top, I've left this not, not any grooves in it just because if you wanted to, you could make this two strings or one string even. So using this little template in these same hash marks, I'm going to make three little marks there. And I'm going to use a Dremel, but when I file this, cut this down, if you notice these frets here, I want to cut down to the top of that fret. I don't want to go all the way to the uh, fretboard itself. So that's going to give you a little bit of distance between there. And these frets, if you're wondering about these, by the way, if you remember from last time, <laughs> they are real... Um, exotic wood. Exotic wood. I get them at uh, Ingles. They're two picks and they're the, the flat uh, two picks. And I put them on there and I cut them off and then using an emery board or the Dremel accessory, I kind of round off the edges and that makes it where it's smoother to run across. And a lot of questions I get is like, well, with the toothpicks, it seems like it's gonna wear out over, um, over time. On my Panjo that I've used for the last couple of years at the craft shows, <coughs> I have on this, if you notice the two picks on this, I have never changed one of the two picks on there from wearing out. And I play, and like I said, I play that. Um, constantly. Con yeah, as Hans has been some craft shows, you constantly hear in the pan show. So like if it's an eight hour a day show, for 16 hours a weekend, I'm playing this throughout the year. Um, and so I, I don't know if, I. They just don't seem to wear wear out, so I don't have an issue with that. One of our members made a guitar, and I believe he used cotter pins. Yeah, you mm -hmm. you could. Uh, there's different things, and like I said, with the two picks, um, I really like just because it's just I just I have a little jig made out where I mark a bunch of the fretboards, and and then I'll just glue you know glue them on there, and then once it's dry, then I come back and cut them off, and then around the edges over. So anyway, I'm going to cut the um, little 
and with the Dremel, we'll put on our And then on our little bridge part also, with the, the little markings for it are going to be the same thing. I have a little um, thing there, but the markings on it, so let me, I can cut this out. And then I'm going to... Um, All right, so anyway, I'm going to lay this on there. There's my pencil. And just mark where the strings are going to come across. So all the marks here, the hose here, and this all line up together. Now, when I do the Dremel on this, I don't want to go very deep at all in the, in the slots. I'm going to kind of just... Um, It's kind of deep enough where they rest in there. And then on these, when I make these, I have, um, if you notice here, there's one little flat edge, and this is rounded here. I found when the strings are running across this bridge, you don't want the string to be laying on like a wide piece or something, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to deaden the sound. So I have that little slot there, and then I have this curve down to where the string is not running, is not touching that wide a space there. And let me put this here, and you see what I'm talking about. On one there. Okay, but if you notice, like I said, the, the, so this uh, flat part is going to face this away um, to where that string runs off back in here. So what I do first is put the strings, but before I do, I have these little things here that kind of cover up your little sound hole, I mean the sound tuning post, and then your string's going to go in there. All right, when I put the strings on it here, I want the base, the heaviest string is going to go on this top side here. You still have some holes. Yeah, well, I have the three screws, yeah. yeah. Just that little bitty bit. I'm just saying when you tighten them up, they wouldn't tighten up real well. Well, the, yeah. Thank you, Hans. He had pieces of the kit left on the table when I'm saying there's something wrong. <laughs> that's how I use it when I'm putting things together. That's Yeah, you know. You there were two little screws left. So I looked over there and there were two. <laughs> they were missing. It comes... <laughs> This last one here. Okay. So now, you what's that? You dropped your washers when you, when you turned it over. The washers on the post. Okay. Thank you. First, I was going like, how do you see that? All right, so I'm running through the back here. And this is coming up through the top. Then the string, there's one that'll be the next thickest, and this is the thinnest, so it's going to go next. And then the thinnest. And all this is in the instructions, right? It is, it, yeah. All right. Now, in the instructions, it, I'll talk about this to where 
this is probably the trickiest part about putting the strings on. What I do is I run it through all the way through first where it's just tight like that. And then I come out about an inch and that's how much slack that I want to put on there. So I come back out here and then bend that up. Well, that's, yeah, that's gonna work. Now they have these string winders that you can tighten these up with. I've cut off one of those parts and where I put it on a drill. I first saw this on when I was a kid. I used to watch Mr. Rogers, and he had took a tour in the neighborhood to a, a cello factory, and. Um, there was a guy there putting the strings on the cello using one of these and I just thought that was the uh, coolest thing and um, in the lobby of there they just happened to be Yo-Yo Ma was trying out one of the ones they <laughs> built and I was like man that's a cool neighborhood <laughs> so anyway I want to wind this where it's going to go clockwise this first one's going to go clockwise Like I said, that's just going to be making really no sound yet. Reason I do clockwise on this first one is because if I had this and it running counterclockwise, it'd be a little bit too much stress on that and it may cause it to break and affect the tuning. So I'll do it that way. And then, and then on this one, I'll do the same thing. I come out about an inch, come back. Now we're going to wind this one uh, counterclockwise. And then the same thing with this. And I'm not going to cut off the access, excess until I get it tuned because sometimes you're going to have the strings on sl have slippage through there. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, this little piece is going there, and this is very important to where uh, I want this to be exactly from here to here the same as on that. And uh, let's see, do you have a little tape measure or, uh, or if I've got one right here? I want this to be 14 inches from this nut here. So place a little mark right there. You want to see it? Yep. Now this is where that goes. Now, um, and I'm still not cutting these yet. Uh, the next hardest thing on this is the tuning of it. Uh, if you've been playing for a really long time, you can do it by ear. Uh, but most people, you can on your phone actually download uh, free apps for tuners and one I downloaded from Google Play is called, and this is real close to Panjo, but it's called uh, Pano Tuner. And I'll show you kind of how the uh, tuning works. I have a, um, is this I'm doing overhead here? So this is where the grandparents got to borrow the grandchildren's phone? Uh, but, oh, the technology. Yeah, I didn't say all technology is bad, but um, this is just, it just goes, it's a um, floating bridge, and it's the same as on violin and the banjo and uh, mandolin. They have a floating bridge. So like I said, what I'm going to go to is D. On the, fir on the first one on the top. Now these strings are gonna, the, a lot of times people will string up one and they'll say, I can't keep it in tune at first.
because these strings are going to stretch a little bit, so I'm going to have to do this a couple times. Now I'm going to go to the second one, which is A. And it sounds like it may be about to break, so you're fine, huh? That's where you're at. <laughs> Okay, there we hear that one's not as clear. I'll show you how to fix that in just a second. Now usually like, so there, um, if you're noticing that sounds a little muted, we're so it, by those being clear, it's up here in this. I might need to groove that out a little bit more. Let me put more down. Okay, so let me go back to D. D, D's first string, well, you have a you have two D's. Two D's, D's, D's. So D, 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 D here, if you notice when I hit that again, it's not on D anymore because of string stretching. And what you can do is also you kind of give them a little stretch there. And one thing on this one, the action's a little bit high, so I can take this if I want to lower the strings on the underside of this bridge. I can sand that down to make this lower to it there. Uh, a lot of guitar companies will have their guitars where they're kind of higher off the neck and they're hard to play down here, but the higher off the neck it is, it's uh, the sound is louder and greater. It's like there's a guitar company called Martin Guitars. Their guitars are the, really the hardest guitars to play because their action is the highest, but they're probably one of the best sounding guitars. They are also. So let me go back through. One back to an A. All right, now that I have um, those. Let me see if I got some wire cutters here. I kind of cut off uh, about that much, and then I'm gonna bend over the other part where it doesn't um, stick you. All right, let's play a tune and see. See if the maker did well. So to me, the coolest part of this whole thing is just uh, actually something that was just wood and still a few minutes ago is actually has music coming from it now. I mean, that's just, um, I put together a lot of these, but that's still a very cool, cool thing. Question in the back. Uh, how much are their kits? Uh, they're $20, and I have this, the, the, where's the parts? where it's just the parts you seem to put together, they're uh, 12. So for that, 12, and the kits are uh, 20. And I do completed ones for 35. When I, when I do the shows, that's what I get for them there. 
the kiss is something that's kind of brand new this year for me uh so my first show coming up is is going to be uh over in canton uh so i'll try them out there uh right here hans had brought me a pan a while back to, and i was gonna make him a panjo with it i haven't um got it done yet but if you notice here this is a uh, very nice pan stainless steel Pan, this is probably about a twelve dollar pan. Yeah, but I figured it would make a nice pan joke. <laughs> but I just never got around to using it. So, so but anyway, and the, this this metal is a lot harder than what here. And I tell you what I did uh, this morning. I was going to go ahead and and mount this on here, but the drill bits I have with me <laughs> will not drill through this. <laughs> So I'm gonna have to get a special uh, bit to, to drill through that, and then, but it is on the way. On the way. And so one thing I find with pans like this, it's harder to to drill through them like that. Uh, so what I've done on this one is I have a little piece of metal that I just cut out. This is actually uh, the strapping metal from this same. The um, also the shutter company throws out their little. Uh, metal strapping so I just cut that from the uh, from that and this this just screws through that neck there and kind of does what you're talking about there but just just with one screw um, and in those and in those packets I think there's also for those that aren't musically inclined there's also some cheat cheat sheets in there. Yeah, we do have music. Now, the way it has a how to play the panjo, uh, when I first did a craft show, uh, I didn't have how to play instructions. And I tell people, well, go online and you can, you know, find instructions on there. But I've come to find out in the last four years of doing craft shows that almost more than selling the panjos, what I'm doing is selling somebody a way to play music and being able to pick it up because when they leave what I try to do is before anybody gets one I have them playing a song on it and once they play a song on it they've got they, they get a panjo and they leave with more than just the panjo they leave going man I play I played a song so I think about that's probably my the thing I sell more than anything is is somebody leaving with the feeling like man I played I didn't imagine I could ever play anything but now I can play and just a little bit of how this music works if you notice on the back of this you have Mary had a little lamb okay. and the reason I start off with this song because the tune is so familiar that if you miss a note you know it's a wrong note and you can correct it the numbers above the words correspond with the frets on the there and you can either play the first string or the third string so what I would do if you notice Hans you can kind of point along with me I'm going to start at the two right there so I'm going to play the notes like on this first string right here I'm at this second fret and I'm going to strum the other ones open and just strum that one press down. So I'm going two, one, open, one, two, 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 one, 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 two, four, four, two, one, zero, one, two, 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 is one, one, two, one, open. Now with the dulcimer style, so I wanted to take that and I'm kind of doing a strum rhythm. Well, I'm just keeping that same. Remember that was just a piece of wood, just a what? So, like I said, especially if I have a young person that come up and then they leave, they, they're playing this song, and then the rest of the time they're at the festival, I see them going around showing people, it's like, all right, all right listen, listen to Mary Had a <laughs> Does help around. advertise. <laughs> so, like I said, just, you know, like I said, that, just to being able, the, the fact that they're playing that song, 
they're more proud of that, I think, than the actual product they're they're holding. So that's why now, in, when I'm at the show, I'm, I'm in my seat there and I have a stand in front of me, and the big emphasis is on showing somebody how to play, and then the Twinkle Twinkle, and then on the website there's hundreds of other songs that you get. Um, also, also a public service announcement. He his his occupation. He teaches guitar lessons. And he does that in up and coming. He has so if you had somebody that wants to learn how to play guitar, he does that. Yeah. I mean that's that's the cool part. When I met him, is the fact that he made the panjos and sold them, but he also can play them and help the kids and interact with the kids and doing it, and that makes a big difference. And he's got a lot of students. That, and this is the reason it was very hard to get him to come on Saturday, is because this is normal guitar lesson time for him. So he had to double up and do whatever so he could come today. Well, I appreciate uh, being here. Uh, but like I said, for, like I said, the coup as far as me is just uh, showing somebody that they can play a song. Like I said, in any of these instruments, the scale, getting these measurements just right is the key to the tuning because some people think, well, you know, just have a board, you know, have your string on there and put some frets down, but the, there's the exact science to where, and the thing is now, uh, there's a formulation to it, like the rule of 18 to where you take whatever that distance is and divide it by 18 and then take the next distance and divide it by 18 or 17 point something, actually real close to 18. Rather than doing the calculations for each fret, you can just copy, like this is the same scale as a mandolin. So I don't know if anybody plays here, but if you play a mandolin and measure from there to there, it's the exact same thing. Except the mandolin's gonna have a few more frets in it between these here <coughs> to allow you to play more notes, which make it harder to play. So it would be in a chromatic scale rather than the diatonic scale. Any other questions? I don't know. Thank you. Oh, thank you.